what your favourite DLC or expansion says about your personality. Now, there's a lot. A lot, a lot. So there's going to have to be some rules. Some may get categorised. I won't cover Shodun 1 and Medieval 1 as they were before my generation. And I won't cover Warhammer, Three Kingdoms or Troy. As to be frank, I have no idea what is going on there. Barbarian Invasion. You like all things in Rome, but love Barbarian more for that extra layer of challenge that it adds. Usually, you only ever play on very hard difficulty. There's nothing you want more than a mod that brings the features from Barbarian over into Vanilla. Campaign over battles any day. Alexander. You're a fan of Alexander himself. Because trust me, it's unlikely you are here for gameplay or accuracy of any kind. You love Alexander and his journey and want to relive it. You probably play a lot of single player story campaigns that follow along one arc. However, I will add, Alexander leans more towards battle fans rather than campaign fans. Britannia. You love Vanilla Medieval 2. The other Kingdom expansions can differ a little too much to really spark your interest, but Britannia sits there perfectly for those who want a simpler experience. Americas. You like genocide. Or maybe you are the type of player that loves to explore a new map. Search around in the darkness. The type of player that got super excited when they discovered the Americas in vanilla for the first time. The Easter Egg Hunter. And oh boy, you wasted your time on this expansion. Teutonic. The name says it all. You may play the other factions and enjoy them, but there's really only one that brings you here. The Teutonic Knights themselves. You like your battles to be epic, beautiful and cinematic, and I must say this expansion does a perfect job here. The Crusades. His Holiness Poop Urban has called on you. It is time, brother. Or at least that's what you may think. You love the time period and stories of adventure to distant lands. You love the imagery of medieval crusaders looking out into the sunset. Or the feel of being on the other side and letting loose a thousand arrows off the cliff into your opponent. This expansion does a really good job at recreating the feel and mood of the time period, despite the usual inaccuracies. If you are a roleplay fan, this is the Medieval 2 one you come to. Warpath Campaign. Hold on, let me just uh, quickly Google and see what this campaign is about. Um, I honestly don't know. Either you like the time period, or it was forced onto you when it became the definitive edition. Peninsula Campaign. You have either read about the Napoleonic Wars, or watched some TV shows on it, and now are wanting to live the experience. However, the main campaign is nowhere near detailed enough. Peninsula offers a more accurate simulation of the time, from the point of view of a general trying to gain the strategic upper hand. For you, the Italy and Egypt were far too tutorial based, 
and you wished there was a more hardcore, in-depth version of them. Let me guess. You have role-played as the Duke of Wellington before. Rise of the Samurai. You like Shodun 2 so much that you downloaded a mod for it. Fall of the Samurai. You may be a Shodun 2 fan, but you also might be an Empire or Napoleon fan that never got the true satisfaction of the gunpowder era. Fall certainly does provide that, from the powerful sound of the rifles to the beautiful sight of the Gatling guns. Faction packs for Shogun 2. You want more out of the game. Shogun 2 was great, but really lacking in variety. To you, the bonus factions are just what you need to not go insane handling the same units over and over again. Blood and gore. May not be your favourite, but like the rest of us, you fell into the trap and bought it anyway. You are stupid. If you did not buy it, you are missing out. You are also stupid. Either way, you are getting messed around. Oh boy, Rome 2. Time to offend a lot of people again. Nomadic Tribes Pack. If you bought this on release, for every other DLC, you are to blame. Stupid people and your horse fetishes. Greek City States Pack. Still going to buy it? Of course you are. You cannot resist those Greeks sticking their pikes up you, can you? Beast of War. Now, do you see your mistake? Daughters of Mars. Will you ever learn? Black Sea Colonies. Okay, this one was actually okay. Desert Kingdoms. You regret everything. Hannibal at the Gates. Yep, we're still going. You love the Punic Wars so much and wanted to live it so much, you just had to see how much they can disappoint you. The campaign does not play at all like it should, which is usually okay. But for a character-driven DLC, it has to be accurate. At least Alexander got this somewhat right. Caesar in Gaul. You wanted to play Caesar in Gaul. There's other factions there, but you only see Caesar. You like Caesar. Read about another general for once. Ooh, Caesar this, Caesar that. Why don't you just cross his Rubicon and... <sighs> Imperator Augustus. You saw the HBO Rome series. Need I say more? Wrath of Sparta. God, we're still going on Rome too. You wanted to play Shogun 2, but have it set in Greece and still probably got disappointed. I know this is meant to be what your favourite DLC says about you, but I honestly cannot think of anything positive for half of these. Empire Divided. You wanted Attila for Christmas, but you got this instead. Just get Attila. Rise of the Republic. You like a good origin story and possibly love the map as well. Maybe not so much for gameplay. What I will say is, for all of these expansions, they would have been so much better if Rome 2 had a great, stable and successful launch. They all had potential, but were pulled down by the base game itself. Even if you love the game, you cannot deny Rome 2 should have been so much more. Wow, that says a lot. In the script, Rome 2 
was the same length as Rome 1, Medieval 2, Empire, Napoleon, and Shogun 2 combined. Slavic pack for Attila. You like pay to win, and those poison arrows certainly give you that. Plus, some of those faction bonuses are quite good as well, alongside the ability to just pay away the Huns, a diplomacy mechanic that works better than any other diplomacy mechanic CA has ever created. Last Roman. Like a lot of these DLCs, you're a roleplay type of person, and this does add a lot of interesting mechanics to that genre. Age of Charlemagne. You want a medieval free, and this is the closest we currently have. You also, if you played the original Rome, were a fan of Barbarian Invasion. That's what these two do so well. They add many more interesting and unique mechanics that alone make you want to play the campaign. From formable nations to war weariness, the updated building system, the Imperium feature and more are all mechanics you would have loved in the base game. And last, but not least, if you like the Attila expansion, Thrones of Britannia, then this is because you are mostly a battle fan. The sieges are some of the best the franchise has to offer. So, if you like sieges, this expansion is best for you. And that's about it. Warhammer faction packs are basically, you like Warhammer and want to play more and get more into it. Hate to be a needy natty, but could you do me a favor? Mm. Milk me! Uh, I really don't want to do that, Ned. Three Kingdoms is for Three Kingdoms fans who just want a different starting era, which I believe is actually a good DLC system. And as for Troy, God knows what's going on there. I, I don't even know. <laughs> Those have been what your favourite expansions or DLCs say about you. I tried to look on the bright side for all of them, but CA really did not make it easy for me to do this. So, some got a bit of a roasting. Anyway, subscribe to get notified of more Melkor videos. Click like if you found it enjoyable, or if I got you right. And let me know down below in the comments which one you are. 1000 likes and I'll do another like it. And share with anyone else you think may be interested. Just trying to do something a little bit different in the community. But for now, until the next one, goodbye. Thank you.